Good evening, and welcome to our first virtual Ordinandi dinner event. My name is Anthony Mangione, and I am the current president of Sarah Council for Canada, of Sarah International. With the restrictions placed on us by COVID, we at Sarah are looking and praying for ways to continue to provide our Sarans and friends of Sarah the long-standing tradition of honoring and celebrating together the Ordinandi class, the class of 2021, comprising the men from St. Augustine's and Redemptress Mater seminaries in Toronto, who with the grace of the Holy Spirit will be ordained this year to the priesthood. First, some background on Sarah. Sarah is an international organization comprised of late Catholic men and women who have a deep appreciation for the priesthood and religious life, who enjoy working to support the priesthood and who are dedicated to promoting new vocations to the priesthood, consecrated religious life in their own community. Indeed, Sarah International is recognized by the Holy See as the global lay apostolate for vocations in the Catholic Church, aggregated by a decree passed in Rome May 3, 1951, to the pontifical work for priestly vocations. Sarah first started in 1935 on the west coast of the United States, when four good friends began to meet every Friday after noon mass for lunch to exchange their thoughts and feelings about the Catholic faith. The idea of Christian fellowship caught on very quickly. The first club in Canada was chartered in, 19, in 1952 as the Sarah Club of Toronto Downtown. Today there are about 800 clubs in 40 countries around the world with total membership of some 14,000. The founding fathers of Sarah took on as her patron, Father Unipero Sarah, now Saint Unipero Sarah a Franciscan priest who traveled to California in 1749 from Spain to establish mission churches. By evangelizing scripture to the natives, he welcomed conversions to Christianity. City names that are now commonplace to us, like San Diego, Los Angeles, Carmel, San Francisco, and others are testaments to his legacy of mission building. Sarah has three goals to foster and promote vocations to the ministerial priesthood, to encourage and affirm vocations to the consecrated religious life in the church, and to assist Saren members to recognize and respond in their own lives to God's call to holiness in Jesus Christ and through the Holy Spirit. Please visit our website at www sarahcanada.com for more information on Sarah Canada. This evening you will hear from His Eminence Thomas Cardinal Collins, Father Matthew McCarthy, Vocations Director of the Archdiocese of Toronto, Father Edwin Gonsalves, Rector of St. Augustine Seminary, Hilarion Mitchell, President of CWL in Canada, and from the Seven Ordinandi who we are celebrating. Let us start the seat program with the Sarah prayer for vocations. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. O God, who wills not the death of a sinner, but rather that he be converted and live, grant we beseech you through the intercession of the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, Saint Joseph, her spouse, Saint Unipero Sarah, and all the saints, an increase of labors for your church, fellow laborers with Christ to spend and consume themselves for souls through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Enjoy the evening's program. Good evening. My name is Father Matthew McCarthy, Vocation Director for the Archdiocese of Toronto, and we have with us tonight His Eminence Thomas Cardinal Collins, Archbishop of the Archdiocese of Toronto. Your Eminence, thank you for being with us tonight. It's great to be with you, Father. So the role of St. Augustine's Seminary in forming men for the priesthood really can't be understated. 
Can you talk about the importance of the role of St. Augustine Seminary in forming men for the priesthood? Well, St. Augustine's is very, very important. It is a community of formation. And within that, uh, a person who is considering the priesthood and who has often spent many, many years reflecting upon it with the advice of others, is given the opportunity to live together with others in the same situation. And in a life of prayer with the Holy Eucharist, with the divine office, the spiritual direction, various different ways in which a person can, first of all, discover if they're called to be a priest, and then be formed to become a priest. Of course, an important element of that is the theology, the teaching of the, the courses that teach things the priest needs to know. But the, the whole center and the heart of it is the life of prayer, where a person can come to know the Lord more fully, and then in consultation with their spiritual advisor or spiritual director, uh, they, they ask the Lord to help them to see whether they're called to be a priest. That all of the formation faculty who are at St. Augustine's, these are people who have been doing this for quite some time, praying and reflecting on the priesthood. Together they consult and they consult with the lay people in the parishes where the seminarian uh, helps out. And all together they can help to give the bishop advice on the, uh, whether this person should be ordained and what we can do to help this person to be a good priest. So St. Augustine does all of these things and it does them very well. Now, before a man enters St. Augustine Seminary to study theology, he first does some time in formation outside of St. Augustine's at a place called Sarah House. Can you talk about the importance of Sarah House? Sarah House is very important. It is a, a place of preparation for the priesthood, just like St. Augustine's. In fact, it's part of St. Augustine's, the whole reality of St. Augustine's Seminary but it's particularly designed for people uh, who have not yet begun their final studies of theology. People who, for example, are taking a university program or who have finished university programs sometime in the past and are taking certain special courses in philosophy, which they need in order to prepare for theology. So it is in a sense the first stage, one of the early stages of formation. And it's a small community together named after St. Junipero Serra, who is uh, the great model of the priesthood and after whom the Sarah Club is named, which is a, a group of uh, people who are engaged in promoting vocations to the priesthood and who are very much at the heart of the Ordinandi Dinner. Now during normal times, most of us would like to have a little more extra time on our hands, but in our present circumstances, we have just that. Whether it's wanted or unwanted, we have extra time on our hands. What kind of an effect do you think our current circumstances are having on men asking the question, Lord, are you calling me to be a priest? So what effect does our current situation have on that? Well, it's certainly a very strange time we're in. And I think that it could have a negative effect in a sense. We're all very disoriented because of these restrictions and not being able to meet directly so much, having all this just virtual connection, this social distancing and distance, because we're meant to be, maybe we have to be physically distant for a while, but we need to be socially connected. So it's a disorienting time. And that could be a negative issue. But on the other hand, I think there's certain great opportunities it gives to all of us in our life in Christ. It may be in a very special way for someone considering the priesthood we can have a bit more time to focus. We can reflect time to pray, to pray, to read, to study, to I think especially read the stories of the great priests of old. We do continue as well during this time through the work of the vocation office, uh, connections with people who are considering the priesthood, often done now virtually as we do almost everything these days, but we do continue that, a uh, whole program we have in order to help people just consider whether they're ready to enter into a seminary formation com uh, community. But I think it's a, in a very special way is this time, we think of the reality of life, of death. We think of the shortness of this life. And certainly a time of pandemic or plague as we used to call it in ancient times, makes us think of this life is short. And I think that's when we may be asked and consider well, what am I going to do? What does God want me to do with my life? And those basic questions of life and death, of salvation, of the purpose of life, these are especially brought to us during this very stressful and difficult time. And I think that actually may be a help in leading people who may have lightly, perhaps somewhat considered that God may be calling them to the priesthood to think more deeply about it and to use some of the time they may have available because of the simplification of life, to pray more, to reflect upon it, 
and to go more deeply into the matters that are most important in life. And for them, that may very well be to discern a call to the priesthood. Let's say there's someone out there who is thinking of the priesthood, joining the priesthood or religious life. You mentioned prayer and the importance of prayer. But other than that, I don't know where to go. I don't know what steps to take. What advice do you have for a person in that situation? Well, I think certainly prayer is the foundation. Uh, and indeed, what the, one of the few things that our Lord said to us about vocations is pray to the Lord of the harvest to send labors into the harvest. And certainly, uh, people considering the priesthood, a life of prayer is important. I would recommend, first of all, the Mass, obviously. That's the center of our life. A time in adoration, although we are very restricted. We do, our churches are open for adoration. Just slip in and spend time before our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. Uh, confession, that's a very important uh, situation, a very important experience of God's presence. A vocation always comes from an encounter with Christ. So the sacraments, the confession, the Mass do that. And I think especially reading the Gospels, to read the Gospels. Then perhaps to talk with uh, somebody who is a trusted friend, maybe an advisor, perhaps a, a local parish priest or some other priest and to, to ask them, what do they think about this thought within the heart that I think I may be called to be a priest? I think that's always a very, uh, a very good thing to do. And then at some point, I remember in my life, a couple of years ago, I've been thinking about the priesthood for a long time. And uh, I finally, I walked behind the, the altar at the sanctuary at Church of Our Lady in Guelph and I talked to my pastor. I said, I think I'd like to be a priest. What should I do? And so um, the local priest, in my case it was my pastor, connected me to uh, actually the auxiliary bishop at the time, Bishop Redding, but it could be very much to, to you, to the vocation director, or to some of the vocation team. We'll get in touch with them. And there are all kinds of things that can be done. For example, a visit to the seminary with the Come and See Weekend. Uh, we have also the associates program where people get together who are in the early stages and beginning to think about the priesthood, maybe even close to entering. So we have a lot of ways of helping. And so I think the first thing to do would be speak to someone you trust, maybe a, a, a priest friend or a pastor, and then get in touch with the vocation uh, office. And uh, we'll be able to help you to know what to do next. Your Eminence, thank you very much for being here with us tonight and sharing with us some of your wisdom and, and some tips for, for young people, perhaps discerning a call to the priesthood of religious life. So thank you once again. Well, thanks, Father McCarthy. It's great to be here.
Good evening. My name is Solarian Mitchell and I am the president of the Toronto Diocesan Council of the Catholic Women's League of Canada. A very warm greeting is extended on behalf of the Catholic Women's League to His Eminence Cardinal Thomas Collins, the Auxiliary Bishops, clergy and religious of our Archdiocese, our Ordinandi class of 2021, and to all of you through the Archdiocese of Toronto and beyond, watching us from your homes. Despite the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, it is a privilege to be here this evening to continue the tradition of the Catholic Women's League of the Toronto Diocese to recognize the 2021 Ordinandi with a spiritual bouquet presentation. We hold this occasion as one of our priorities as it gives us the opportunity to put our faith into action. We thank the Sarah Club for organizing this virtual dinner to honor your vocations and for the intentions of our priests. We join the Serens, the Knights of Columbus, and others from our family of faith coming together for you, the Ordinandi, to give thanks for your vocations and for your gift of service to the people of God and to our Catholic Church. On this occasion, you will receive many tributes and gifts. One of these is a personalized mystical spiritual bouquet. This bouquet is a gift that you cannot hold in your hand, but one you can always carry in your heart, as it represents the love and support from the members of the Catholic Women's League and your collective family of faith. Our prayer offerings to you this year will be displayed on your screen and include masses, communions, stations of the cross, rosaries, visit to the Blessed Sacrament, and other prayers. In this historic year, as a Catholic Women's League, 102 councils in the Toronto Archdiocese celebrates our 100th anniversary. Know that collectively, we are surrounded, each of you, with the loving armor of this spiritual bouquet. This pandemic year has shown us that we must not take our faith for granted and to believe in the power of prayers. We thank each of you in advance for serving us in our parishes and elsewhere. May God bless you and all and keep you always safe in his love and care through and beyond this pandemic. Good to have you here, Deacon Kevin. Good to be here, Father. Good. So can you tell us a little bit about your life before you entered the seminary? Before I entered the seminary, uh, I was in high school. So I entered seminary right after high school. And uh, before that, you know, just growing up in a normal family life. Um, my family and I moved to Canada from the Philippines back in 2001 when I was nine. And just growing up in, in Mississauga, um, basically my, my, whole, my whole life now, and um, looking after my, my younger sister. And uh, yeah, just growing up here in, in, in Canada and, and growing up in Mississauga and um, yeah. So you were pretty young when you entered the seminary. When did you first feel the call to the priesthood? Well, I first heard God calling me to the priesthood when I was in grade eight. Okay. Uh, I just finished um, a weekend retreat with a charismatic group called uh, Youth for Christ. Mm. And one of the talks really spoke to me. Uh, the point of the talk was to ask the question, what is God's plan for you in your life? And when I was 13, my, my, I thought that my dreams was, you know, to, to play basketball in the NBA and make it big, but those that didn't dreams, happen, I guess. Yeah, eh? those dreams fall a bit short. Yeah, so sure. I, I hear you. The height requirement <laughs> necessary. Um, but I was praying, I remember one day in, in my room and just asking God what his great dream for me was. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, God revealed to me his dream and asked me the question, why don't you choose me? And you know, at that moment, all the promises and the, the greatest dream that the world could ever offer 
was wasn't good enough for me and it wasn't uh, it wasn't as great and as grand as the dream that God had for me and that was for me to choose him and to follow after him so deacon when were you uh when did you first enter St. Augustine Seminary? I started in uh, 2014. Okay, and can you tell us a little bit about your life prior to entering the seminary? Ah, well, uh, even though I'm studying for Charlottetown, I was actually born in Cape Breton in Nova Scotia. And uh, I grew up there in the middle of the woods, right next to the Bredore Lakes. and. I moved to Charlottetown in 2001 and at that time I started um, nursing school at uh, UPEI and when I graduated I worked as a registered nurse for nine years before entering seminary and then three summers, my first three summers of uh, seminary I worked at the hospital when I went. Okay, so it sounds somewhat cliche but caring for soul, caring for for bodies, now you're caring for the souls. I get that a lot. That a lot. Uh, I get that a lot. Uh, for me, it's not much of a difference. <laughs> um, you know, uh, nursing has always been taking care of the whole body. Right. Uh, this is kind of just specialization. So can you tell us when you first felt the call to priesthood? One of my earliest memories, actually, is uh, of sitting in our church in uh, in, in Boysdale in Cape Breton. And uh, I remember watching our parish priest, Father John Webb. I was probably about four years old. And uh, I remember watching him and thinking that I didn't understand what he was doing. You know, he could have been speaking another language sure. for all I, I know, but I, I knew that what he was doing was important and that someday I was going to be a part of it. I didn't know exactly how, uh, but I knew I was going to be a part of it. And then as I was growing up, um, I occasionally had thoughts about the priesthood. Um, and they kind of, it was really, I was about 13 years old when I really started thinking priesthood is going to be for me. When did you first enter St. Augustine Seminary? I first entered back in 2014. Okay, and prior to that, what were you doing with your life? So just prior to that, I was uh, on the working side of things. I was helping my parents out. We were selling office supplies. We also had a post office. Um, recreationally, I was teaching martial arts. So yeah, that was sort of where my life was at. Okay, and um, when along that time did you first feel a call to the priesthood? I'd say about probably about two years before that point. Really? And uh, that was when it really felt more genuine to me, like there was sort of a bit of a tugging in my heart mm -hmm. uh, towards the priesthood, a little more openness to the idea. Mm -hmm. And so what went along with that? Were you at work? Were you sitting in traffic? What was the situation surrounding? Yeah. Um, for me, it was more the side of, uh, like, I guess even before the two-year point, it was sort of just learning more about my Catholic faith. Okay. So I would listen to podcasts and stuff like that, learning about my Catholic faith and all that sort of stuff. And, and one of the, those podcasts talked about um, what does it mean to be a good Catholic man? Mm. And that was to be open to all vocations available for Catholic men, which was married life, single life, and the priesthood. And so I guess that sort of just opened the door a little bit. Uh, before that, I was always very much focused on just getting married. Mm -hmm. um, but from that point on, and then at about the two year mark was when the associate priest at my parish, he, uh, he asked me a very interesting question. And that question was, have you ever given priesthood a chance? Uh, before that, interestingly, uh, some people had already asked me, you should become a priest. It was more forceful. It's, mm -hmm. oh, you'd be good as a priest. You more know? of a wall goes up after and that. And for me, it was just like, forget it. You know, like, I want, I like girls. You know, I want to get married. I want to date. You know, that, I want to have kids. You know, that, that was immediately, that was mm -hmm. my immediate response. Mm -hmm. But uh, my heart was opened before that. And then it was sort of readied for that question. So when did you first enter into the seminary? 
Uh, I had a bit of a interesting journey. I first entered in 2013 okay. and then left for a couple of years and then entered again in 2017. Okay. So. so before you entered the first time in 2013, what were you doing with your life? So I was, I, I grew up on the prairies, lived in a small town. So before I entered seminary, I was working, went to high school, went to university, did a BA in philosophy and religious studies at the University of Regina, and then decided to, to uh, follow the call that I was hearing. So went there, went, to, uh, applied to the seminary. And uh, then I took uh, the spiritual year, the propedeutic year here. Mm -hmm. um, and then discerned that I needed to take some time off. So I went back home mm -hmm. and I worked in corporate sales and I worked at the university for a while while I did some graduate studies back home. Okay. And then PATH brought me back to the seminary, so. Right, right. So I guess it was in, in your later years of study back in 2012, 13, that you felt the call to the priesthood, is that right? I felt the call to the priesthood from a very young age. Okay. Um, my uncle is a Catholic priest, mm -hmm. and so I grew up with a, with a um, I'd say a fairly regular Catholic family, just Sunday masses, not too much um, beyond that. And when I'd go and visit my uncle or spend time out there, I'd, I saw what he did outside of the Sunday masses. Mm -hmm. And I found that experience to be very attractive. There was something about the life of a priest that always, always seemed uh, on my radar. And so, yeah, the more I, I, I thought about it, the more I, I thought that that would be a pretty uh, interesting way to, to spend my life. And there was something that I always felt joy and peace being in, in the church. So it was something I decided to, to see, where, see where that path went. And it has led me to this moment. And so that hasn't gone away even when you went back home after that first stint in the seminary. Yeah, yeah. So I, I uh, left the seminary and really I discerned marriage for a couple of years. And throughout, throughout all of that, the one constant was I always felt peaceful in the church. Mm. Yeah. And that's where I always felt um, the most joy. I had tremendous joy in other areas of my life, but the place where I felt the most was um, being in the church, working, uh, working in the church, and so that was something that I really decided to, to, uh, to follow, and I've never regretted it. So when did you first enter the seminary? What year was that? Yeah, so that was um, almost seven years ago, uh, a whole seven years ago that goes by so quickly. It's incredible. The biblical number, seven years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I never thought about that. Yeah, a sacramental number. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 2014 was when I entered. And um, yeah, it's just incredible how time flies, mm -hmm. literally. Um, in the seminary, you kind of enter, it's a big step, right? Yeah. So you enter into the seminary and you, th you look ahead, you think, wow, I've got seven years. Am I going to make it? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, is this really what I'm called to? Um, you know, you do the process, the continual discernment, right, every year. And then next thing you know, it's like internship and third theology. Yeah. And, and then these markers. Yeah. The markers, exactly. And then ordination to the diaconate. Mm -hmm. And then fourth year. And mm -hmm. um, here you are. Here you are. Under right the cusp of being ordained to the priesthood. Exactly. So before you entered the seminary, what was life like? What were you doing with your life? Yeah, before entering the seminary, right before I was working in Calgary as a chemical engineer. Okay. Uh, in the oil and gas industry. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, I was just really, really living life, the life that I thought would make me happy at the time. Mm. Uh, I really was. And that was just a bit after my, um, a bit of a conversion that I had and, mm. and kind of struggling and, and grappling with the idea that maybe I would be called to the priesthood. Mm -hmm. um, so at that point I was working in Calgary and, and really enjoying life but feeling deep down in my heart that there, was, that there was something deeper, right? There was a restlessness in my heart that I needed to address mm -hmm. uh, and ultimately led me to look into, de uh, pr definitely pray more. Mm -hmm. uh, and then step, step one. Step, <laughs> step one, exactly, absolutely. Like turn to God in prayer, but, um, but look deeply into, okay, what is God calling me to? Is this really what God is calling me to? and then making the steps of like calling my own vocation director in Kingston mm -hmm. and, uh, and then coming back to, to Kingston, which, which is home. Home for you, uh, yeah. That's where I grew up, yeah. So what year did you enter the seminary? 
I came to St. Augustine's in uh, September of 2015. Okay, and prior to that, what were you doing with your life? So uh, right after high school, I began an undergrad in uh, Bachelor of Music at Dalhousie University in Halifax. Uh, and so I was studying um, music, specifically pipe organ and conducting. And uh, right when I graduated in the spring of 2015, I applied to the seminary and came here that fall to St. Augustine's. Okay, and along that time, when did you first feel a call to the priesthood? So it was actually early on in my, in my studies of my undergrad. I, I went through a, a real period of struggle and doubt if, if that was where God wanted me to be. And uh, I found myself uh, one summer afternoon in, in my cathedral uh, in Halifax, and I was just praying to our Lord and asking him what was it that he wanted for my life because I was really kind of lost and not really sure if I was on the right path. And uh, that day in, in prayer, he really spoke to me that I was where I needed to be for that time. Mm. And so I, I continued to pursue my, my degree, but at the same time, I knew there was something more there. And so I began to discern what was next for me. And in that process of discernment, uh, God solely revealed to me that he was calling me uh, to the priesthood. So uh, you entered the seminary pretty much after high school. Right? What was life like before entering the seminary? Well, um, I, I, uh, I grew up, I, I come from, from a large family. I was homeschooled, so sort of that stereotypical mm -hmm. um, side of things. But it, it was, I, I, I'm glad to say that I had a very, uh, a very blessed childhood in a lot of ways. Uh, homeschooling is not for everyone, for sure, but I, I love learning, so, so I, I, it worked very well for me. Um, and, then, and then I also, I was, I was in a few different extracurricular activities, especially Air Cadets, actually. I, I, had, I had a wonderful time uh, in Air Cadets and, uh, and actually discovered a, a great love for flying at the time. Mm. Uh, and then I, I went for training and then I found out I wasn't very good at it, so I never finished, but <laughs> unfortunately. But, uh, but then went to Brebeuf College High School in Toronto. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and I was leaning, in my time there, I started to lean very much towards either engineering or, uh, or programming. Okay. Um, one of those two. I, I think my, my last sort of fascination before I started considering the priesthood was, uh, was chip architecture, computer chip architecture. Oh, okay. Uh, so I, I, was, I was leaning in that general direction um, until, uh, until I in grade 11, I, I heard a call to the priesthood, and uh, and as I started to go down that road, uh, sort of dropped all the other things, and uh, and I think that's when we met, when I mm -hmm. when I went on a high school retreat, got to come here to the seminary for the first time. Wow, so, so many memories come full circle. Yep. So talk a little bit about when you started feeling the call of the priesthood. What was the context? Were, were, were you in class? Were you at home? What was going on at that time? Well, I was actually on a retreat with, uh, not here, but uh, with the priest of Opus Dei. Uh, it, was a, it was a retreat for high schoolers. And uh, they showed us, I think on, it was a weekend retreat, I think on the Saturday evening, they showed us a video on the, uh, the life of John Paul II. It's a, a, a movie, the, the movie Carol, mm -hmm. if you've seen it. Uh, and I remember after the movie finished, sort of the, you know, the, the screen went dark and the credits started to roll. And I remember just sort of, kind of like a little bit like a flash of lightning, you know, just, just one of those sort of uh, moments where a bunch of things came together. And I looked at the way he had been a representative of Christ to the people around him. Uh, he'd been an agent of forgiveness, he'd been a teacher, he'd been a father. Uh, and I, I remember just being very deeply struck by the way he made, made Jesus present in his own person, in, in his own interactions with people. And, uh, and at the same time as sort of like seeing all of that, I, I just kind of heard this, this very soft, but th this, this very firm pull to, uh, to go and do the same thing, to, to become that sort of representative for Christ to, uh, to the people around me. And, uh, and it, as, I, as I sort of followed that voice, it, it led, me, led me ultimately to, uh, uh, to the vocations office and the seminary.
Thank you for joining us for the Ordinandi event. Each year we meet live and in person to listen to the vocation stories of all the men preparing for the priesthood. This year the format is changed, but one truth remains, God is present. And it is God who has been working in the lives of all the deacons and preparing them for the holy priesthood to serve God and to serve the church. Here at St. Augustine Seminary for over 100 years, we have been faithfully handing down the traditions, the teachings, and the history of the Catholic Church. But more importantly, we have been forming men to live in the image and prepare themselves to be like Christ the Good Shepherd, who laid down his life for his sheep. And these men are preparing to serve you in their parishes and in their diocese. We also have 47 men who are at the seminary preparing at different stages, and they represent 11 dioceses in Canada, one, two of them studying for the diocese in Vietnam, and two studying for a religious order. Besides that, we have eight men who are studying at the Redemptorist Martyr Missionary Seminary under the guidance of their rector, Father Tomasz Skibinski. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Our Lord said, pray to the Lord of the harvest that he may send more laborers. And so I ask you to pray for us, pray for the men, the 47 men here and the eight men at the Redemptorist Mother Seminary. Pray for them that they may continue to love the Lord and prepare themselves for ordination. But also pray for more laborers, that God will send men to discern for the Holy Priesthood. In 1913, the sixth Archbishop of Toronto, Archbishop Fergus McAvey, and a wonderful Catholic gentleman, Sir Eugene O'Keefe, came together to establish St. Augustine Seminary. Today, under the leadership of Cardinal Collins, that mission continues to prepare men to joyfully serve the Lord as priests in the church. Here at St. Augustine's, restless men find their rest in God. And so each day they prepare themselves in prayer, in study, in community life to serve you, the people, and to do it joyfully, to give their hearts joyfully to God and the church. Thank you again for joining us. In a special way, I'd like to thank all the Sarah Club and the Serens for their ongoing support and their prayer for vocations. I'd also like to thank all the friends of St. Augustine who continue to give us all the support we need. And finally, Share Life that contributes very generously to our mission year at St. Augustine's. Thank you again for being part of this event and may God bless you. Hello again. I trust you will agree with me that what you have seen and heard was truly inspirational. On behalf of the 460 Sarans in the 17 clubs across Canada, thank you, Your Eminence, Thomas Cardinal Collins, Auxiliary Bishops, Father Edwin Gonsalves, Father Matt McCarthy, Father Tomasz Skabinski, Orden Andy, and all others who have contributed to making this evening such a joyful and uplifting event. Lord willing, these men will receive the Sacrament of Holy, Holy Orders this spring. To Sarans across Canada, what you have witnessed this evening is your prayers at work. Sarans all over the world, pray daily for our priests and for new vocations to the priesthood and religious life. In closing, mark your calendar for next year's Ordinandi dinner on Tuesday, March 1st, 2022. 
Let us keep praying for an end to the pandemic and that we can break bread in person soon. Please remember to visit our website at www.sarahcanada.com for more information on Sarah in Canada. Let us close with the Sarah in prayer for perseverance. In the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit, amen. O oh God, you have constituted your only begotten Son, supreme and eternal priest, for the glory of your majesty and the salvation of mankind. Grant that those whom he has chosen ministers and dispensers of his mysteries may be found faithful in fulfilling the ministry they received. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Good night. Keep safe, keep well, and God bless. Hello, everyone. My name is Deacon Patrick Sala. I'm from the Archdiocese of Halifax, Yarmouth, and I'm in my final year of formation and studies at St. Augustine Seminary of Toronto. For the last six years, St. Augustine's has been my home, and at the heart of this home is our seminary chapel. It's where we seminarians come throughout the day to pray, and a highlight for me of my formation has been the liturgical experiences here, when all of us are gathered together praying and singing to God. Uh, before coming to the seminary, I studied music, and so I have had a particular joy uh, of making music here in this wonderful space. To celebrate this chapel, we seminarians often get together and put on concerts for our brother seminarians here in the house. And this year, we've decided to put on a rather special concert, a concert of Marian music, music dedicated to our Blessed Mother, and particularly the concert will uh, feature many settings of the Ave Maria, the Hail Mary, one of the fundamental prayers of our Catholic faith. And so having these many settings of the Ave Maria, it'll be in a sense kind of a Lectio Divina on that beautiful prayer as we hear it in many different musical iterations. Along with this concert, we're hoping to be able to fundraise for the restoration of this chapel. Specifically, we are hoping to be able to install a new altar. The altar is at the heart of the chapel, as is the tabernacle, and it's something that is so important in our lives as seminarians. And so we're hoping that you, the faithful, in the Archdiocese of Toronto, but throughout the country and around the world, if you're able to tune in to this uh, virtual concert, that you'll be able to share with us in the joy of making music here in this chapel, but that you'll also help us in our pursuit of worshiping God with the installation of a new altar. Be assured of our prayers for you, and we ask that you continue to pray for us, us men who are preparing for the priesthood. God bless you.